it would go over my head. And I was like, okay, God, um, show me, tell me, direct me. What is he getting at? My clock started doing something weird. Every time I looked at the clock, I would see 10-10. And I'm like, okay, what's 10-10? Called my sister who was into the Bible. She's kind of confused, didn't know. I said, okay, God, I'm on my own. Tell me what it is. I was watching a religious channel. Said John 10-10. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy, but I come that you might have life more abundantly. And I'm like, okay, God, but what do that mean for me? And I was going through it with some people, my neighbors. Next thing I know, I'm looking at the clock. 11, 11. I'm like, oh, great. What does that mean, God? Tell me. What does that mean? I wasn't getting that one. Then it started doing three, three, three. I started seeing three, three, three everywhere I went. I said, okay, God, you know I'm not getting it. What does it mean? I was up one night because I'm bothered, like Reverend was saying. Don't pay attention to people. Don't pay attention to what's going on. Don't pay attention to what's around you. And I was doing that, all frustrated, all feared up. Kept seeing three, three, three. I hit YouTube. I said, God, give me somebody to pray for. No, pray to, pray with. Give me somebody to pray with God because I'm tired of this situation. Found him on YouTube. The first prayer I got was the fire. If I be a child of God, let the fire of God come down and consume my enemies. I started praying that prayer as I was going through it. Next thing I know, I was directed to his website because I ain't had no church home. Had a sister that went to church. She slacks off. Don't call me no more. I said, okay, God, I need a church home. Website, Jeremiah 3. Three, three. I'm like, oh my God, are you serious, Lord? So I, I like, like you, two years, been with him on, on YouTube, praying and hoping and praying and hoping. Then he started telling me, you're not a babe in Christ. You're a child of God. If you receive this word and you've been saved, you're a child of God. Start holding on to the word. Start practicing it. Start reading it. Start living it. I did everything he said I got breakthrough. 2004, I had breast cancer. Was on the chemo drug tamoxifen for five years. After five years, I'm one of those people look up pills. It can give you cancer. I said, okay, God. Now, this is way before I met the Reverend. I said, God, um, I don't want to keep taking these pills. So I said to my doctor, um, if I stop taking this pill, will you be okay? Go, oh, no, 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 no. You got to take that pill because it's going to help afterwards. You got to keep, I say, but it can give me cervical cancer. Doctors are stoic enough the medical field. They don't go on faith. So I challenged him. I said, if I go on a little bit of faith, stop taking the pill, can I? No. I said, okay. I ignored him, went home. Turned on the TV, one of those little religious channels. There was a lady who had breast cancer worse than me. What she did, she went on faith, went as far as she could go. She said what she did, Holy Spirit told her, Put down the pills, pick up the Bible, start speaking out your faith for your healing. So she pro proclaimed the, the uh, scriptures for healing over herself. And then she said after that, God told her, now don't keep telling me about it. I already know. Thank me for it. Every morning she got up, she said, thank you, God, for my healing. And went on about her day. She said her and her husband started doing positive things. She cut out anybody negative in her life, friends, family, clit, by, gone. She started watching positive things only on TV, comedy. A month later, I think it was a month or two months later, went back to that doctor. Breast cancer, gone. So God is no respect of persons. If he did it for her, he could do it for me. So I did exactly what she did. It took about a year and some months, but I got my healing. Amen. And I went and I told him, um, so how was the scans? And he was kind of looking at me. Um, it's not there. I said, really? He said, so were you taking your pills? He said, because I've been checking on you, and I know you've been filling the prescription. I pulled out all those bottles, <laughs> poured the pills Amen. on that table. I said, I went on faith. God healed me. Hallelujah. So he was mad at first. He was mad. I said, well, remember, we did make a little deal take me to lunch if I got healed. Naturally, he ain't take me to lunch. Didn't want to hear it. And I have one more testimony from yesterday. When we walked in late, and you said Hebrews 11, 11. Yesterday, 
the neighbors I've been having problems with. I said, I'm gonna do what Reverend Bochy told me. I um, ignore it, ain't gonna pay attention to it. My godmother lives two doors down. She calls me in a panic. Sarita, is your camera on? Those kids, they in the street again. They need your car, they been messing with my car. So I flex on the camera and I look. I said, by the blood of Christ, in Jesus' name, no harm will come to that car because I've anointed this car, Lord, with your blood and it has a fresh anointing and fresh grace on it in Jesus' name. It is done. The kids, the, you the car. They, they coming out in the street. They on this side the car. They on that side the car. They never came near our car because I also use visualiz visualization. I imagine the blood of Jesus on me, spreading throughout my house, directly down the path towards our car across the street. They did not come within the perimeters of our car. And after a while, they went down the street and played in front of my mother's car. And she called me, I said, Mama, you gotta ignore it and put God's faith on you. You a woman of God, and you're calling me, acting like a five-year-old child screaming and hollering. I'm calling police. All right, Mom, see you later, bye, clear. Me and my husband, it's just us. We have maybe some family and friends, but all those friends I had dropped off because they were negative. Nobody wanted to see me happy. And I was the kind of person I was alone for a very, very long time. I met him when I was in my late 30s. I am 49 now, he's 65. I was by myself. When I say by myself, by myself. And I say, God, if you got somebody for me, they'll show up. I forgot all about it, met him, he was driving Metro on the bus. And the thing, the funny thing about it was he wouldn't go away. If I'd be no thank you, have a nice day. Every day I would see him, he would ask me, no thank you, have a nice day. And I was telling the Reverend's wife, there comes a time when God, when you ask God to give you something and it's in your face and you don't accept it because you're thinking that's not it, that's not it. And the whole time, God's like, you asked me for that. That's what I'm sending you. It's right there. And it was him who spoke it out of his mouth when I finally said yes. And we agreed to start dating and seeing each other. Perfect gentleman. And when I say they don't make him no more, they don't make that kind no more. <laughs> he come from the 50s, okay? Martin Luther King, the Martin, he's seen it all. They don't make him like that no more. Never, never, never asked for sex. Never made a pass at me. Because at some point I said, okay, he must be gay. Because he ain't, no, he never made a pass at me. And most of the times, two, three weeks later, men are like, well, uh, give up the rhythm. No, excuse me? Never. He was a total gentleman. He said, I was waiting until you were comfortable. Mm -hmm. I was the one that said to him, okay, I'm ready to jump your bones. <laughs> <laughs> but we got married. <coughs> and he has been the most amazing. We don't argue. We don't fight. We don't go to bed angry at night. We talk through everything. And I was like, wow. This is so amazing, I never thought. I would have a black man at that. Because when I asked God for a man, I ain't had no particulars. But I did kind of say, well, Lord, I don't want no black man because you know, they got issues, they got children, they in jail, and I just can't, they got crazy exes. And he a black man. God did one bad. He said, not only am I gonna give you a husband, I'm gonna make him black, and I'm gonna make him black, black. Mm. He, he black, blackberry. You know how they say blackberry, sweet and juice? Black, frying pan, black. And I love him to death. I love him to death. I have more, but I'll share that week after the next. But that's my testimony. All I want to say is hold on to God's word. Once, when Reverend pray over us, he's praying for us, but God is through, praying through him. You got to pick up that word for yourself. You got to read that Bible for yourself. You want that breakthrough? You got to do it for you. Speak it out your mouth because God will deliver, but you got to do it. He can pray for us all day and night, but you got to do it. Pick up that word. When I can't reach my Bible, I got my phone, I got a tablet, I hit YouTube. His prayers are coming from God. He's anointed. Like he always tells us, don't, don't follow me. I want you to be a disciple. I want you to know God's word. Follow God. I'm just a messenger, and he is so right, but every time I've listened to him on YouTube, and I can pick any prayer, and I just hit one random. It speaks to a situation in my life. I don't go around fearful anymore. 
I don't pay attention to negativity, even when it's family. Click. <laughs> They've gotten mad and asked my sister right there, say, she don't do you no more. I can't. Because you're coming at me with the world's problems and with issues. That's not me. I love you, but I can't do you no more. You don't have to feel guilty about it, because I used to feel guilty. I was Aunt Rita. Everybody run to me to solve their problems. I can't solve your problems. I don't want your negative energy. I don't want that negative spirit. My last part real quick, the demonic attack I got. That's how the devil let me know I'm on God's path. I'm on the right path for myself. I had just laid down on my bed. I told his wife. Out of nowhere, I saw my bedroom door just open a crack. And all of a sudden, I couldn't move. Here's my hand to God. I ain't never experienced nothing like that, but this would happen. The door cracked open. I'm laying on the bed. My eyes are open. This thing, and I call it a demon. It looked like a white person, but it had pale skin. You could see the veins, black eyes, blonde matted hair. And it was like, bah, bah, bah. and instantly I got scared. And the first thing that came to mind was Jesus, because I could not speak. And I started saying, Jesus in my head, Jesus in my head. Next thing you know, my mouth loosened up a bit, and I went, Jesus! And it was like, Bleh. I said, Jesus! Bleh. Jesus! Bleh. It fled. It fled. I got up. At that time, I was dealing with things in the Catholic Church. I had some holy water, exorcism prayer. I anointed that house from top to bottom, rooftop to the ceiling of my bedroom, down to the basement. <laughs> when I took, that's my sister. When I took a picture that following night, we have a tree. Now, in a space in the tree, you know how trees hide. There was a space, two red eyes. I still got the picture. I'll bring it next time. To, I got it out of the house. But I said, thank you. Because once I hit YouTube again and knew what Reverend Bochy teaches us through those prayers, that's the devil. He's scared. You got the devil on the run now because you want the right track. You know how to pray, you know how to pray effectively, you know how to make Satan back up. Don't lose it in faith, don't lose it in fear. Keep speaking your faith over yourself. Like he said, I got cards at home, I tack them on the wall, scripture, because sometimes I can't remember, I, I tack it on the wall and say that scripture when I'm feeling fearful, anxious, anxiety, confused, can't remember, scripture, not the pill, scripture. Because if he did my healing for me, Oh, and he paid my bill. I lost my job because I got sick. Because after the breast cancer, I came down with this so-called progressive brain disease. After the surgery, because I had gotten a second opinion, I didn't want to get the surgery. I said, Lord, you can heal. You healed the breast cancer. Heal this. Well, I got a second opinion, and the doctor said, if you don't have it, you can stop walking and talking. Okay, here's the surgery. After the surgery. I'm still aching and paining a little bit. And I'm like, well, God, what's going on? I goes back to my neurosurgeon six months later. He's like, I've looked at your scans of your brain. You're here. Amen. You're here. So in my mind, I had, well, but I, I, I was painting it. No. God just spoke to your doctor, Don Don. You healed. So start speaking your healing over your life. I shall live and not die. The prayer that I found on YouTube. So now I speak my healing. I speak it every day. And the way God, once I lost my job and he paid my electric water, I ain't got no money. So I'm like, God, what do I do? I looked on the back of the bill for the water. The water got paid by a program that helped disabled people. But the electric bill, Pepco wasn't budging. I'm like, what can I do? Lord, I don't know what to do. I prayed on it. Called the electric company because I was going to make a deal like, well, if I can pay $10, 20 something. The lady said, let me put you on hold. She come back four minutes later. She said, um, you're no longer on the residential assistance program discount, utility discount program. And I'm like, I'm at fear immediately. I'm like, oh, God, what does that mean? So I said, okay, so what do we do now, ma'am? She said, oh, the bill is paid. The bill was $300. I said, huh? And some say, shut your mouth, let her talk. She <laughs> say, your bill is paid up for the next five months. The utility discount program hit your bill, hit your account, so it's paid up. And I'm like, I didn't apply. This is the <laughs> kicker. You have to apply to get that money. 
you have to show up in per 